Flutter Version Management, or FVM for short. It's a CLI for Flutter, which will make the SDK management super easy. And no worries, I'm actually going to explain it. Here's an example when this can be super useful. You have one project where you're usually on the stable channel for Flutter, and you have another project where you are working on a web version or a desktop version, and you want to be on the latest channel. Let's say you want to be on the dev channel or master channel. In this case, every time you have to switch between the projects, you need to change the Flutter channel, which means that you have to re-download the SDK for Flutter each time. This can be very tedious, and sometimes you want to even lock the version for that specific project. Now, this is where FVM comes into place, and we'll look into all of that and learn how we can utilize it in our projects. If you like this kind of videos, make sure to like and subscribe. You can find a full write-up over at robertbrunager.com. And of course, before we get started, make sure to like the video and let's get into it. So this new CLI tool just got a new awesome documentation website, which you can find on fvm.app. Here you can look into all the features that it supports. And we're mostly going to look into the two main categories. The first one is the multiple Flutter SDKs. And the second one being the project versioning. Now both of these go hand in hand, but we'll get into that as well. So if you click the get started on the documentation, you can see an overview and why this may matter to you. Now we have already outlined that this is pretty cool, so we'll go ahead and go to the installation section. Now I have it already installed on my system, but you can go ahead and follow this installation section and you will get it installed. The next part is the configuration section. Now I will go through that, but I recommend you to go over the configuration section depending on when you actually watch this video, because some things may have changed when you actually watch this. Now, later on in the video, we will look into how we can have the Flutter SDK set for a project. So this ignore line will be super important when you actually upload to things like GitHub. Now, if we scroll down a bit, you can see that we also have some configurations for things like VS Code and IntelliJ or Android Studio. In this video, we're using Visual Code. So if you go to the Visual Code settings.json file, you can just add these lines and you will have the setup that we are going to go through later on. But when you get an understanding of this, you can, of course, go back here and see what you prefer. And of course, for those that use Android Studio or IntelliJ, uh, I recommend the Android Studio section. Now let's head over to a terminal where we can actually start using this CLI. If we start by just writing fvm doctor, we can see some base info when we haven't really configured anything. Now the first thing you have to do when you actually get fvm is to start getting some SDKs. If you write fvm list, you will see that you don't have anything. So we can actually go ahead and install an SDK. In this case, we're going to install the stable version of Flutter. And when that is done, you can go ahead and do fvm list again, and you should see that we have the stable one now. Now the next thing we want to do is that if we want this stable branch to be the main branch that we're going to use globally, we're going to set that as the global one. Now if we want to use the Flutter command to use the SDK that we downloaded here, it recommends us to go through and change the path that we have set in our environment. As I'm using Windows, I'm just going to edit the environment variable, which was pointing to the old Flutter SDK, to the new one gotten from FVM. Now I will have to restart the terminal because we have changed the environment variable, but you can probably also resource it if you are on Mac or Linux. If you now run FVM list again, you should see the parentheses of global on the stable tag. And if we run flutter dash dash version, we should see that we're now currently using the stable channel. Now to make sure that everything is working correctly, we're going to install another Flutter version or SDK. In this case, we're going to install the beta one. Now when that is done, I will just clear the terminal so we can actually see what's happening and run FVM list again. Now we should see that we have the stable and the beta SDK installed. And once again, running Flutter version, we should see that we have the stable one. Now to actually see that this is working, I'm going to switch out the global one being the beta. So now if we run Flutter version, we should see that we have the channel beta for the Flutter version. 
Notice here that we didn't have to re-download anything, we used to switch out which version we are actually using for the flutter command. I will go ahead and switch back to stable again, and now we are on the stable channel. And to just show that once again, we can do flutter version and we are on the channel stable. So now let's look at a actual practical example by creating two different projects. So as we have set the FVM global version to stable, we will now create a stable version of the project. So by running flutter create and then the project name, I will just post fix it with stable so we can make a clear distinction when we actually show in this video. Now this will actually just create the project. If you want to, you can use your IDE or visual code to actually create the project if you want to in that case. Now when that is done, I will just go ahead and migrate this to null safety as well. So I will navigate into the project. When we are inside the project, I will just call dart migrate with the flag of apply changes. And that will just go ahead and make the project null safe right away. There's a reason I'm showing this and I will show you that in the other project we're going to create. But let's first go ahead and navigate into this project by just opening it in code. When we are inside this project, we can go ahead and write fvm use stable inside here. That will create this .fvm file or folder, which means that if we are using fvm, we can see that this is the SDK that will be used when we actually run the project. This just makes sure that when we run the project, we will actually use the stable version. And of course, inside here, you can have multiple flavors for different versions to make it even more advanced. And of course, if you follow the configuration, you can see that I have those three lines, which just says that we're going to use the Flutter SDK in the .fvm location for the project. So now this is all fine and dandy. When we run the project, we're actually using the stable branch or the stable channel. But let's create another project with the beta channel and I will actually show you the real use case of this. So let's switch over our Flutter command to using the global beta one. So if I just run FVM list here, we can see that we have the beta as global one. And we're going to run the Flutter create command once again. And I will just go into post fix this one with beta because we're going to have the beta channel for this one. And notice here that I use the beta as global, which means that this project is actually being created with the beta channel. So now when it's created, we actually don't get anything regarding that we can migrate to the null safe version. Because in the beta branch, it's already null safe. Now let's navigate in and open code. Now in the terminal, we're just going to go ahead and write fvm use beta. And once again, that will create that fvm folder with the config of being beta. If we now press F1, we can see that if we select the change SDK, it has the beta branch selected. So in this case, I'm just going to run fvm flutter run. In this case, we can actually see that fvm is running with the version beta. So now if we navigate to the other project and do the same, so fvm flutter run, we should see that that project is using the stable SDK. And you may see some benefits now because we don't actually take the time to download the different SDK versions. We can simply just switch between projects and use the right SDK right away. Now, as we are in the stable project, I will just run fvm doctor and we can see the fvm config found, which means that this is using the stable version and we have no flavors selected. And of course, if you want to upgrade the SDKs, you can just run FVM Flutter upgrade and it will go ahead and update. Now, if you're using an IDE such as VS Code or IntelliJ, you will just be able to run and it will just work out fine and you don't even have to care about switching channels or doing any of that. Hopefully now you can actually see the use case of this. If you like this kind of videos, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to support me, make sure to check out Patreon down in the description. Now if you feel like you're not done learning, I have some other videos coming up on the screen as well, so make sure to check them out. And I will see you in the next one.